morning. It's Monday, live stream day, also known as the day I bribe my children with a, a meal. Today we're going to have a, I gave them a couple of options. I said, one, you can have hamburger steak with onions and gravy or baked pork chops with a potato side of some sort or roast and rice and gravy. Well, Rebecca was the only one who responded because it doesn't matter to anybody else. She said, I think either option A one or option C. So I'm going with the roast. That's the easiest because today is going to be live stream day. Did I mention that? It's live stream day. Tell your friends, tell your family. Let me turn this camera around and show you what I'm working with. For my roast, I got my trusty crock pot. Yes, it's dirty on the outside. I got me a roast from the freezer, two packs of this all juice, and two cans of this cream of mushroom soup. Now, also added is one can of water. Now this, let me turn it back around. Now this came from a uh, charge nurse that I used to work under, and it is the simplest roast, but she and I, I was 3T Vicky unit clerk back when I guess I was 18, 19, 20. Yeah, I was a unit clerk during those years. But it wasn't until later that once I got married and uh, became a mom, we actually moved next door to them. Our fence, my back fence was her side fence. And they invited us over for supper one night, and this is what she cooked, this roast, and I, it's the best roast ever, you know, because I used to do the roast like you uh, brown it in the skillet, and then you put it in the crock pot, and you add your potatoes and your carrots, and you make your own gravy. That's the way I grew up making a roast, but then when she showed me this, thank you, Angie, Angie Arian, she, um, she changed my ways because I love this roast. I make it, this is how I make it. The days of browning the roast are few and far between. So let me get this going. I know I'm a tad bit crooked. Ouch, sorry about that. And I forgot that I had to turn the crock pot on already. So, ow, burnt my finger. Let me just pause for a moment. Okay, I'm back. I had a little woe with me moment because that really hurt. Glad y'all didn't hear me scream or should I say holler scream sounds more like 911 it was just a holler I forgot that I had turned my crock pot on a while ago I plugged it in I guess I got to I don't know not paying attention so I'm gonna sit here and let it cool down before I put all this stuff in there I don't know I don't want to break my crock pot but as I say, I usually just use one of these. But since um, I'm having the kids over tonight, I'm gonna make a double part of the gravy. The gravy is one cream of mushroom, one can of water, one packet of this, and then one roast. Forgot to set the roast out last night. Once again, we should clarify, this is not a professional cooking show. This is Vicki trying to get it done. So I will come back to you as soon as I, I don't know, cool the crock pot down. All right. If you hear a big crack, you know uh, I didn't cool it down enough. So I'm gonna put in my cream of mushroom soup. If you had a Asked me when I was a teenager if I liked mushrooms. I would have denied it. Because I didn't. The older I get, the more my um taste buds change. I'm just gonna tell you the day I really start liking frog legs, the apocalypse is near. That's all I'm gonna say. I hope the rapture absence happens before. My taste buds decide to like frog legs. All right, so I've got two cans of water, 
two cans of cream of mushroom soup. Gonna stir it up a little bit. Y'all, I'm telling you, this is the best roast. I know there's a roast out there that's called like Mississippi pot roast or something like that. I don't know where that came from. It must have been up there in the Delta somewhere because down here, I ain't never heard of that until my daughter made it one day. And she makes that roast. Um, that's her favorite roast. Because when we go over there to eat, when it's her turn to cook, that's what she cooks. It has like little, I don't know what you call it, peppuccinis or something like that. I don't know. I think it's like a pepper. Yes, I don't have I don't have Janice's uh, straight jacket on this morning. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and see my barbecue meatball recipe video. You know, I, I wiped my hands off on that um, apron while I was cooking, and I put it in the laundry room. Well, we put Mia in the laundry room. And you know what Mia did? Wait, let me just show you. So apparently while Mia was in the laundry room, she decided to eat the meatball stuff. So that's what Mia did. Yeah, she did that. So I guess she shredded it enough that when I put it, let it be knowing to me that it had rips in it. I put it in the washing machine and it just disintegrated. Again, not a professional cooking show. That was the best, the best um, apron. Now, normally I would have uh, thawed out my roast, but I'm gonna start it early enough that it shouldn't make a difference. Now, let's turn it on, officially. I forgot to say, when I said that was my best apron, it it's second to this. Can y'all see this? Sheriff gave me this one. I love it. I absolutely love it. Now, one day, I let my husband wear it. Now, I never let him wear my hats, my sheriff hats or touch my sheriff apron. And one day I let him. And he got a bleach stain on it. Yeah, I thought about it. I did. So I, I keep my hats, my sheriff hats, sheriff department hats, hidden from him because I don't want them dirty. And then I no longer let this apron be out for the world to see. The sheriff had a, had a cooking team and they all got aprons and he gave me one. Love it. Let's get to work. Another thing I'm gonna have, oh, let me take this off. That's precious to me because the sheriff gave it to me. I feel like I'm, I belong. I belong. I'm part of the team. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to have the roast and rice and gravy and uh, filled peas. These are some of the filled peas that I put up this past summer. And I just put them in a little water, add a little salt. Now, sometimes I start the pan off with... Um, a slice of bacon. I'm not today. I'm just going to go ahead and, and uh, cook them and then I'll add some of my bacon from the refrigerator. Bacon grease from the refrigerator. And that's about it. I'll turn these babies on. Put a little salt in there. 
I'll put a little bacon in there in a little bit, bacon grease in there a little bit. And that's it. So let me get the rest of the stuff started. All right, now I'm not gonna cook this yet, but I'm gonna get everything ready because if you're anything like me, things happen. And I don't want to be at the last minute hurrying around like a chicken with my head cut off. So I have this little thing. This is the second one I've gotten. This is a little rice cooker. The first one I got was um, bigger than this, but you know, it's just me and Chris now. So what I do is I put in whatever amount of rice I want. Now, I don't know. I just usually put two scoops. But today, I may put three. Hope it don't come out of the pot when it's cooking. But if you know me. Now, what I do, because my mama taught me this, make sure it's two to one. Now, that may be wrong, but that's how it was in the Perkins household. Two to one. Two parts water, one part rice. Put a little salt in there. Oh man, I said I wasn't gonna go ahead and cook it. What did I just do? I put the water in there. Guess I'm gonna go ahead and cook it. I'll just have to warm it up. I don't want it to be gummy. Mama said whenever uh, she got into Daddy's family, she says, there must be a Chinaman somewhere in this family because they eat rice all the time. And, and I don't know, I guess it come from daddy's side of the family, but we eat chicken and dumplings over rice. Does anybody else do that? That could have just been a, a Perkins thing because they ate rice over everything. I really hope that wasn't an offensive because I didn't mean it as an offensive thing. Hmm, guess I'll know if the backlash slaps me in the butt. Yeah, that's just something mama said. Don't blame it on mama. All right, now let me go to the next part. Had to pause a minute, Chris called me. Let me know he's going out of town. All right, for dessert tonight, I am gonna make something that one, you know, my daddy was a union electrician and one of the coworkers, I believe, to him, moved close to us. I think they moved into the trailer park for a little while and they must've been working on a job down here. And I'll have to ask mother if she remembers the details of the story. But she made a cake and it was a fudge marble cake and it had almond icing. And it is one of our favorite cakes. You take just a regular fudge marble. Um, I've done it several ways. I've done it in the nine, you know, the eight inch round pans. I've done it in the um, butt cake. But today I'm gonna do it in this kind of pan. And I'm gonna cook it just like the directions say. But the icing is what makes this cake. And I don't know why this cake is so good, but it is so good. You, you um, do a little bit of butter, a little bit of uh, Crisco, uh, powdered sugar, as much as you want, you know, like four cups, start with four cups. I'll probably just the four cups be fine for this. If I was making the uh, the round cake where you have to, you know, put some icing in between, I may have just used, a, you know, a little bit more powdered sugar. But so you a little bit of butter, a little bit of Crisco, uh, four cups of, or a box of powdered sugar, and almond extract. And then you put a little milk in it to, um, you know, get it creamy. And it is so good. I don't know why that, that almond um, powdered sugar cake icing is so good on that fudge marble cake, but it is. But I'm not gonna make that right now, like the rice. I wasn't gonna make it right now. I, there's a way to cook it, to heat it up later. So I guess I'll just heat it up. I have actually before taken a colander with cold rice and running under hot water. I have done that. But I think this little thing here, later on, 
closer to the supper time, I'm just gonna turn it back on warm, this little pot, and it should warm it through. If not, I'll just do something else to make it warm again. And it's gonna have gravy on it. But still, I can't believe I did that. Sit here, told y'all I wasn't gonna do that, and y'all let me do it anyway. <sighs> but that's about it. I'm gonna do some yeast rolls, and I'm gonna set them out about, mm, about, 1231 and let them start rising and they should be done they should be ready about six because the uh live stream's at 6 30 but you know what hmm y'all may be seeing this after the live stream let me stop and think how i'm gonna do that i don't know i may have to just go ahead and make that cake put them rolls on the pan so i can get this video out today oh the work, the work. Okay, I decided to go ahead and make the cake so that y'all could see it, and then I'll post the video. And then we'll just find out how tasty it is at the live stream. How does that? So first what you do is you go ahead and mix it according to the box instructions. You mix it up. You, uh, you know, fit, uh, prepare your pan, whether it be the Joy spray or you know, the little bit of grease and flour. I just happen to have a little bit of joy spray, so I use that. You're gonna pour it into your, into your pan, but you're gonna leave a little bit behind. Like I left a little bit behind, see that? It's not much. And that is where you put the chocolate part. So I'm gonna open up the, the second pack that comes in the box. It's the, the chocolate powder pack. These fudge marble cakes, I'd have never, I don't know if I'd ever, of course we still live in a trailer park so we didn't do fancy back then, but not until this lady showed us this cake. My cousin, you know, we're, we'll talk about this on the live stream. Y'all just remind me. We, we want to go to Alaska. But we also may not have the funds to go to Alaska. It would have been nice not to have a taxes and insurance to pay, but neither here nor there. It is what it is. So we found out at the meeting the other day that the Alaska meeting, that your insurance, your health insurance will not pay for traveling from like the boat. Say you have a, I don't know, an appendix rupture or something and you need to, they need to bring out a helicopter and fly you to a fancy hospital somewhere Guess what? That helicopter ride is on you. So they have this thing called uh, travel insurance. So there was um, one that the, the group has used in the past. And then there's one, um, I think it was nationwide. So Cindy got quotes on it and stuff. And uh, it was like, geez, this trip is getting more and more unattainable but anyway it was kind of like well you know if i have if something really really happens to me or chris do we really want that expense to fly back to hattiesburg or do we just want to say hey take me on home jesus is a lot cheaper i don't know just kidding i want to fly back to hattiesburg but i don't want to have to sell the house to do so so anyway she looked up the quote. She did the research. And not today. I can't do it today. But I'll take a look at it and see. I don't know. There's the chocolate part. Now what I'm going to do. Now how am I going to do this? To show you. Hold on. Okay, what I've done is I've just spooned the chocolate part. And just kind of made a line of chocolate. 
And now I'll just go like this. So that it's kind of like, um, oh, it's hard to do looking through this camera to do this. Anyway, that's what it's gonna look like. And then I'll put it in the oven. Just bake it like it normally bakes. Okay, I decided to go ahead and get my yeast rolls out. Now these are the yeast rolls that I buy. And they're little balls of dough. And what you do is you put them on a, you prepare your pan. And then you take a, take some saran wrap, which saran wrap is my enemy. Of all the tools in the kitchen, saran wrap is my enemy. You spray it with some Pam. And you put it on top of the rolls, like this. And then you let them out, you let them rise, I don't know, four or five hours. But now, since I don't want them out so early, I'm gonna stick this in the freezer to keep them frozen solid. And then I'll pull them out, you know, after 12. All right, so that's about it. Over there you can see, I got the tea going for tonight. I use one of those little, here, I'll show you. I use one of these things. Why do I use one of those things, you say? It's because I got to the point where I can't remember to keep an eye on the tea bag that's boiling on the stove. And I have boiled many a tea bag bone dry. So, I got the cake in the oven. And again, the icing on the cake is just four cups of powdered sugar. Uh, I don't know, about this much of uh, butter, a couple tablespoons of grease. Uh almond flavoring, and a little bit of milk, and you just blend it up and you get it as creamy as you want to. And then you pour it over a cool cake. But that is it. So we got the roast going, the rice going, peas going, the yeast rolls are already in the pan. Now I know how to make a yeast roll. I got my grandmother's yeast roll recipe and she was the, uh, the she was in charge of the kitchen at both the schools in Brooklyn. So she was the head dietitian. And I know how to make a yeast roll, and I've got her recipe. But I'm just not making homemade yeast rolls today. I'm making these store-bought doughs that rise up like a yeast roll. Got the tea going. So roast, rice, and gravy. Peas. Oh, macaroni and cheese. I am going to do macaroni and cheese, but I won't whip that together till uh, later. And it is Paula Deen's mac, mac and cheese casserole. Paula Deen's mac and cheese casserole. I'm not going to do that right now. I got to do other stuff right now. And that don't take long. You just boil your noodles and put everything together. All right. I'll see y'all tonight at the live stream. Tell your mama, tell your friends.